call for Mrs. Helen Henderson. Well, this is Mrs. Henderson. I have your party. Go ahead, Honolulu. Helen? Who is it? You don't need three guesses from me, sweetheart. What do you want? I want to talk over old times. No. I finally found out where you are and who you are and what you've got. We'd better get together and take inventory. We've got absolutely nothing to talk about, you and I. Kid, we've got everything to talk about. It'll cost you exactly 100 million bucks if you're not on the next plane for Honolulu. Helen? All right. I'll be there. Take care of that point. Now for the next. Ben, if I were you, I'd sell to a different magazine. This one buys your stuff and then spends a month complaining about it. Queries, Frank, not complaints. They like to verify and clarify, but they pay well for it. Now, about this business of getting rid of his papers. They heard from their own sources that he burnt them in his fireplace. Well, I'm not a big New York editor, just a dumb Honolulu cop. So it's possible they're right. But you don't think so, do you? It's a logical theory, except for one thing. People in Honolulu don't have fireplaces. Lieutenant, a woman named Mrs. Randolph Henderson was just checked into the hospital. Gunshot wound. The Mrs. Randolph Henderson? It's Helen Henderson, all right. She came in on flight 7-3 this afternoon. What's her condition now? They said it's not serious. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'd better get down there. Do a little verifying and clarifying of my own. You want to come along? Straighten that out on the way. No, I can call you tomorrow. Well, that would be a big story. No, no doubt about it for the newspaper boys. But a magazine story has to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Tell me all about it sometime. Once more, Mrs. Henderson. The question is a very simple one. You know the answer, and you have no reason to withhold it. Who shot you? I don't know. You do know. I don't. Lieutenant, the doctor said just five more minutes. Mrs. Henderson, there are several facts I already have, because my men went over that area with a fine-tooth comb. Point one, they found seven fresh cigarette butts, three with lipstick and four without, all in the same spot. 
Now, to the simplest amateur mind, this indicates that there was a man and a woman out there together for something close to half an hour. Lieutenant Roper, I'm very tired. I know exactly how you feel, Miss Sanderson, but the doctor says you're perfectly capable of answering some questions. Point two, there were two sets of footprints, yours and his. Point three, there were two sets of tire tracks, yours and another car parked nearby. I don't know whose car it was. Couldn't you have asked him while you and he were standing there smoking? All right, what were you doing out there at that hour? I drove out to look at the ocean. In your handbag, we found a return ticket on the flight that leaves for New York in the morning. Now, you've been in Honolulu exactly eight hours. Are you trying to tell me, Mrs. Henderson, that you flew 5,000 miles to Hawaii just to look at the ocean? I'm only trying to tell you, Lieutenant, I don't know who shot me. All right, then. There'll be a Sergeant Kahane in to talk to you in the morning. He won't believe you either. Good night, Mrs. Henderson. Hello? No, but I'll give him the message when he comes in. Goodbye. Hello? Oh, just a moment, please. Lieutenant Roper, returning your call. Frank, will you do me a small favor? Let me know when Helen Henderson's getting out of the hospital. I thought you weren't interested. Her story still hasn't got a middle or an end. True, but she's now a staple of the magazine trade. A woman of mystery. Who shot the wealthy one-time hatchet girl? And why won't she tell? Any story on her old self? Uh, I'm sure of it. In fact, if you can pry one out of her, I'll buy it. You couldn't afford it. How do you expect to get a story out of her? I've got a badge and I can't. You have no idea how sneaky I can be when there's enough money in it. Good luck, Ben. Incidentally, she's checking out of the hospital in just about 30 minutes. Goodbye, Frank. Thanks. Are you leaving Hawaii, Mrs. Henderson? I, I have no further comment. The police have the story. They don't believe the story, and neither do we. What's the real scam, Mrs. Henderson? I never saw the man before. It was just an unfortunate accident. When are you leaving Hawaii? I'm not leaving. You're not Are you afraid to remain in Honolulu? Hey, there's my The guy tries again. It was an accident. It could have happened to anyone. Mrs. Henderson. Let her alone, boys. Ask me the question. I understand perfectly, Mrs. Henderson. No messages, no calls, no anything. Ah, uh, Mrs. Henderson, uh, nice to see you again. We met in New York, I believe, at a party. My name is... Hi, Ben. What are you up to? On a story? My story just checked in. Hmm? Listen, Tom, I need a favor. I'm Dr. Benjamin Gregory, Associate Professor of Archaeology, and I've been staying in your charming hotel for 10 days, okay? I'm your friend, Ben. It's okay by me if you want to be King Kamehameha the Great. 
It's not going to get you next to that girl. If it were that easy, I wouldn't bother. There'd be no story in it. <laughs> One good close look is all it takes to see the difference quilting makes. See for yourself. This is Kaiser quilted foil life size. And here in this dramatic close-up film is Kaiser quilted foil from a food's eye view. See the difference? A half million quilts with ridges for strength, valleys for air. Better for baking, Capping, wrapping. And here's good news. Kaiser foil in the 75-foot economy roll. Three rolls in one. The third roll, half price. If you're interested in saving money, look for this box. One good close look is all it takes to see the difference quilting makes. But don't take our word for it. Buy it. See for yourself. You've been keeping yourself. Hi, Freddy. Say, do me a favor. The fellow who just came in, what do you know about him? Anything wrong? Well, there might be. What do you know? His name is Jacobs. He's from New York. And that's all I know. Well, how long has he been staying here? Five days. I may be wrong, but uh, I think he carries a gun. What's up? Well, it's just possible he took a shot at a friend of mine the other day. Say, do you mind if I use this? I guess you better. Check out? He sure didn't. He owes me for five days. Five days? Didn't you spot him just today? No, three days ago. Well, why didn't you tell me then? Well, I thought he was one of your boys. I followed him today to find out and called you two minutes later. He must have known you were on his tail. 
He came back here just long enough to pack. We'll go to my office. Get a full description of Jacobs in the car, okay? I never say no to you, Frank. <sighs> Sorry, old buddy. So I'd love to put her under 24-hour surveillance. But she's not guilty of a crime and hasn't charged anybody with one. So there's no budget for it. You must have learned something after following her around for three days. I have. Well? Well, she... She leaves the hotel about 11 o'clock every morning. Starts going to all the beach hangouts. Bars, bowling alleys. All the places you'd never expect a person like her to walk into. Well, she's either very stupid... or very brave... or the whole thing makes no sense. My guess is she's looking for the man who shot her. That's what I said. The whole thing makes no sense. Haven't you tried getting acquainted with her? Oh, I've been putting it off. Look, I feel like a heel now. How would I feel after I hook up a meeting and start conning her? Could you be in the wrong business? No. I just talk noble. My legman's coming over to the hotel tonight. We're going to set up the damsel in distress routine. She'll never go for it. Yeah, I know. So we're doing a twist. Call the manager. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> if you want this table, take it. You let better go be of my arm. Because you're rich. Because you got your name in a newspaper. The lady huh? said let go. I suggest you do that in quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you suggest, huh? <laughs> there you go, Galahad, Lance, and all. He get hit really hot. I call doctor. Help me get him out of here, please. Hello? Eric, it didn't work. Once she saw I wasn't a stretcher case, she just walked off. I'm sorry, Ben. I was afraid she wouldn't buy it. You washing out the project? Guess I'll have to at these prices. But I'm relieved in a way. She's so darn young and scared and lonely that I... Someone's at the door. I'll call you back. Oh, hello. Mr. Gregory, I just stopped by to apologize for... Well, for being so rude and ungrateful. I'm terribly sorry. Well, there's no need to apologize. But it's accepted anyway. Don't give it another thought. Thank you. I really am quite grateful. Good night. Good night. It's not easy to have a lot of money when you're not used to it. I adjust quickly to anything, <laughs> even not to money. Not you wouldn't. I used to think I'd love to be rich. Then I met Randy and we fell in love. Suddenly there was all the money in the world. <sighs> I did love him very much. Everyone said the, the hat check girl and the millionaire, the same old story. But it wasn't that way at all. Well, and you don't have to convince me of anything. I'm sorry.
that is quite true. Got a brain in your head. Almost. No point in even talking to you. Not all afternoon. Thank you, Ben, for these last few days. I think I'm very close to being happy again. Don't look so worried. I don't mean we've fallen in love or anything. I know we haven't. But you... Well, you're something new to me. You, you just don't seem to want anything from me. Come to think of it, I've never even met a professor before. I didn't go to college. I didn't even graduate from high school. Are all professors like you? What am I like? You don't want to marry me. Do you? Me and my countless millions? If that's a proposal, give me a few seconds to think it over. It isn't. You're not curious about me like everyone else. You haven't even asked me if I know who shot me or... Why I'm staying in Honolulu, if someone's trying to kill me. Now, it's almost suspicious. All right. Why are you staying in Honolulu, if someone's trying to kill you? I have a standard reply. If someone is trying to kill me, they could do it in New York or Paris, too. So why leave? Is someone trying to kill you? Of course not. It was just a meaningless accident. I'm sorry I brought it up. I'm not. You know, when I'm not with you, I worry about you. Well, what happens when... when I leave Honolulu? Haven't you a family, someone close to you? Uh, my father's still alive. I haven't seen him since I was nine. He's got another wife, four or five kids. He writes me for money sometimes. I send it. My husband had a sister, Deirdre. But after the accident, after I came into a large part of the Henderson money, she didn't even come to the hospital to see me. Accident? In the south of France. A drunken playboy in a sports car hit us head on. Randy was killed. And I was in the hospital for almost six months. So you really don't have anybody now? No, there's just me. And a flock of lawyers. And you, for a while. Helen, I want to tell We're you... We're getting much too serious. It's all my fault. Priced illiterate. You uh, talking to me, fella? Well, just barely. You know that article you did for Green Book? Uh, could you see me some other time? I, I did an article on archaeology. No, no, the one on baseball in Hawaii. Now, you better check your facts a little closer. Hank, look, could you please... Right on the first page, you were comparing that picture to Tyrus Robert Cobb, the Georgia Peach, right? <laughs> Why, even my five-year-old boy could have told you Ty Cobb's middle name was Raymond. Tyrus Raymond Cobb. You goofed, kid. Yes, I did. See you around.
Listen. Helen, listen to me. I wanted to tell you the truth from the minute I met you. I was going to tell you tonight at dinner. Believe me, Helen, it's the truth. Do you think telling me tonight would have excused what you've done? No, but you might have forgiven me. I make my living as a writer, and you're a story. If I'd have walked up to you and said, hello, I'm a writer, well, that would have been the end of it. In a way, I'm glad I lied to you. Otherwise, I'd never have gotten to know you. I suppose you feel justified. I am a big story, I guess. But I'm also a woman, so I won't be seeing you again. We have a date for dinner. After that, if you don't want to see me, I won't ask you to. I can tell you right now I don't want to see you again. Come on, you have to listen to how I feel. And there are other things. About the man who's been following you, for example. What man? I'll tell you at dinner. He was probably a policeman. No, I checked that out. What did he look like? I'll pick you up in exactly two hours, all right? All right, Ben. I'll have dinner with you tonight. talk about that. Where are you? I've got to see you. Talk about what? Money. I'm going to give you more money than you've ever dreamed of. I've had my lawyer send me a, a million dollars in negotiable bonds. It's in the Pacific Bank right now. I want to see you there tomorrow morning. You know what I want, baby, and it's not a million bucks. Or ten million. You're insane. I'm offering you a fortune. Don't you understand that? Sure, I understand it. I'll even take it after I get what I really want. Now, listen to me. You'll never get that. I'd rather lose every cent I have. I'd rather be lying dead than do what you've asked me to do. Do you understand that? Yeah, that sounds pretty clear. So you'd better listen to me. I'll be at that bank tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Be there. If you're not, I'm leaving Honolulu. Take what I'm offering or get nothing. Don't know 
Helen, you didn't really mean what you said in the car. Then can't we just not talk about it? We have to talk about it. Look, I'm as sorry as you are that it ended. I wish it hadn't. Because, well, you were so very nice. But I can't forget that I wasn't a woman to you. Just a hot story. That's not true. And I'm going to spend this whole evening proving it to you. You all right, Helen? Yes, yes, I'm all right. Somebody call an ambulance, fast! Do anything with her, Barney. Take over and be tough on her. I mean it. There's a killer running loose, and she knows who it is. Don't let up. You understand? Right. Answer me, Mrs. Henderson. Yes, yes. Go on with your question. One question. Who's trying to kill you? I told you. I don't know. You do know. I don't know. Mrs. Henderson. Leave me alone. Please leave me alone. All right. Take that. Have Gregory sign it before he leaves. You can go. Mrs. Henderson stays. Kahane, homicide. Yes, Doctor. I see. Yes, it's clear. Thank you for calling, Doctor. Is he still alive? So far, on the critical list. He isn't expected to live till morning. <coughs> yes, you cry, Mrs. Henderson. Shed those tears and consider that this man, this waiter, is the sole support of a wife and three children. Take it easy, Barney. She's been through a lot. And why keep her here? Why? Because she's a menace. Because she's a liar. If that man dies, she's a material witness to murder. Helen. Helen, tell them. Ben, I want you to do something. I'll call my attorney in New York. May I, Sergeant? All right, Ben, he'll contact you. He'll send you what you need. Get that boy the best of help. The best, do you understand? Go to the family, his family. One of the things they'll need is money. Will you do that, Ben? Yes, I'll do it, but... I've been a policeman for a long time. I've seen a lot of things. Not many of them good. But you, you're something else. It was a nice thing you did about the money. For the waiter's family. Help a lot. And you can take it off your income tax. All right, Sergeant! His name is David Jenkins. He's a sailor on the base here. So you did know. And why'd you stick around and let him take a second shot at you? I wanted to talk to him. I, I didn't think he'd try a thing like that again. All right. That's the who. We'll get him. Now the why. Why did he shoot you? I told you all there is. Get the rest from him.
want an APB on David Jenkins. And that shore patrol officer downstairs, send him to me. Have a policewoman take Mrs. Henderson back to her hotel. She's in protective custody. Hello? This is she. They did? Yes, sir, right away. Well, we'll get out of here for a while, Mrs. Henderson. They want us at headquarters. They found that fellow Jenkins. I never heard of Helen Henderson in my life. Why do you keep saying I shot her? I never shot anybody. You read newspapers? Well, sure, just the sports pages. I used to play a little baseball for the Navy, you know. I couldn't hit a curveball. But you throw one pretty well. Come on, Jenkins, do yourself a favor. Mrs. Henderson says you shot her. She'll testify to that in court. That'll fit you up for shooting the waiter. Now. What'll happen if he dies? You know? Mr. Sure, I'm not very smart, but it seems to me just her saying I did it isn't enough. It's supposed to be a reason, I thought. Now, do you know any reason I'd shoot a woman I never saw in my life? Oh, come off it, Jenkins. You went AWOL for a week. You're a goof-up artist and always have been. Now, why did you shoot her? Now, wait a minute. I'm AWOL, okay? I've been AWOL before. Six times, according to the shore patrol. All right, six times. That doesn't make me a killer. I didn't shoot anybody. That Mrs. Henderson, she's just mistaken. She uh, picked your name out of thin air, huh? Said you were a sailor because it sounded good. I don't know. I can't explain it. Hey, you know what, Sergeant? It was in the papers. What was? Uh, about me, being AWOL, I mean. And I bet that's where she got my name. Say, I bet it is. Not here yet, huh? Barney, when can I see Mrs. Henderson? Turn around. Helen, how are you? Did you do what I asked the waiter, his family? Yes, they flew in a specialist from the mainland. I took the money to his wife. Oh, good, good. Thank you, Ben. All right, let's go. All right, Mrs. Henderson. Is it or isn't it? That's the man who shot me. May I go now? Hey, she's... Well, this lady's awful pretty, but she's crazy. I never saw her before. Get off the low comedy. One of you is lying. Mrs. Henderson, why did David Jenkins shoot you? Didn't he tell you? How could I, lady? I didn't shoot you, you know that. Sergeant, I said all I'm going to. Get her out of here. Back to the hotel. Bye, lady. Sure is pretty. Take him back. To the cell? What for? You know I didn't shoot that lady. Listen, Jenkins, I'll level with you. I don't know whether you're lying or not. I'm going to find out. Okay, you'll see. Barney? What? You think the kid's telling the truth? Listening at doors, Ben? Every chance I get, but the door was open. Is there a case against him? Jenkins? Not without a motive. There's no connection with that Henderson woman. She won't say why he shot her. You know, she could have picked his name out of the paper. I just don't know. Barney, if Gregory is in there, ask him to come in, will you? You heard about the waiter. He just died. No, I hadn't heard. And our young killer Jenkins has a lawyer with him right now. He'll be out of here in an hour. You can't hold him? Not without help from your friend, Mrs. Henderson. Say, how close did you get to her? Just close enough to hurt. Well, you owe me a few favors, old buddy, and you can pay them all off tonight. I want you to see her alone. I want you to tell her about Jenkins and about the waiter. 
Why? Because it might shock her into some sense. Besides, she might talk to you. All right, I'll talk to her, Frank. But don't ask me to come running back to you with whatever she tells me. What do you mean? There's a killer running loose, and she's the only one who can put him away. I'm sorry, but I can't use her again. Okay. No promises demanded. I'll leave it up to you. This will get you in. Ed, have someone take Ben Gregory to the hotel where we've got Mrs. Henderson. Good luck. I heard the waiter was going to be all right. He is. Why would she claim you shot her if you didn't? I don't know, Mr. Pritchard. I didn't even take this thing serious at first. But when she looked right at me and said I was the one who shot her, I knew I was in trouble. Now, look, Jenkins, there's one man you don't lie to, and that's your lawyer. I want you to tell me what your connection is with Helen Henderson. There isn't any. I never saw her before in my life. Then why'd you try to kill her? Say, whose side do you want, anyway? I didn't try to kill her. You own a handgun? No, sir. You were issued a handgun by the Navy, weren't you? No, sir, I was never issued a gun. Where were you when someone took a shot at her in that nightclub? I was at the Paragon Ballroom. Alone? Yes, sir. Paragon Ballroom holds about 3,000 people. Can you prove you were there? Well, I don't know. But I was sure there. In fact, I was still there when the shore patrol found me and put me under arrest. All right, David. You can stop looking so worried. She may have $100 million, but unless she tells us why you took a shot at her, she hadn't a leg to stand on. I'll have you out of here in no time at all. All right, open up. Now relax. The only trouble you're in is with the Navy. News, Helen. The waiter died. Don't blame yourself, Helen. Ben, you think I'm a decent person, don't you? I know you are. I've violated everything I've ever believed in. And did it for money. Not for love. Or even hate. Just for money. Ben, do you have any idea how it feels to grow up in hunger and filth? And suddenly own so many millions that Nobody can, can tell you how much you have. What did you do that you think was so terrible? I'm not asking you as a writer, just as a friend. And I told Roper I wouldn't repeat anything you said to me. It doesn't matter. I'm ready to tell them now why David Jenkins shot me. David and I got married in a dirty little office in... Cotty, Mexico. Within a week, I discovered he was pathologically jealous. He'd fly into insane rages if, if I so much as caught the eye of a passing man. Finally, he beat me, almost killed me, for smiling at a parking attendant. Then I ran away to Philadelphia. That's where I met Randy. Why didn't you divorce Jenkins? 
If he'd known where I was, he'd have killed me. He proved that, Frank. How did he find you? Oh, he, he saw a picture of me in a newspaper after the auto accident. And he called me in New York just after I'd gotten out of the hospital. Bring Jenkins in here. I'm sorry, but your identification of him has got to be part of this record. Mrs. Henderson, who is this man? Who is he? Jenkins. I'm legally married to him. He wanted me to marry him as if it were the first time so I wouldn't lose my inheritance. And when I refused, he... The question of a bigamous relationship having existed between yourself and the late Randolph Henderson, this court cannot assume jurisdiction in the matter. And since no act of bigamy has been committed in the state of Hawaii, lacking jurisdiction, the court has no recourse except to express its disapproval. You reporters and newspaper men are not to photograph or interview this young woman while in my courtroom. I suggest you go into the corridor. I hope that in view of the publicity attendant upon this matter, the other presumptive heirs of the late Randolph Henderson will take the necessary civil procedures to prevent your profiting from an illegal act. My late Mr. Henderson's sister is here now, Your Honor. I've already assured her that she won't have to go to court for the money. I'm happy to hear that. You may go. Well, it's over. By the way, the gentleman with Sister Deirdre is the man who was following you. A private investigator she hired. Well, she's got all the money now. I hope it makes her happy. Mrs. Anderson, David Jenkins has been admitted to the psychiatric hospital. Any comment? I hope they can help him. And what are your plans now? Well, I haven't any. Going back to checking hats? I may. I've got to earn a living. Well, after having all that money, how does it feel to be broke? Same as it always did. Sorry, gentlemen, she's not broke. She has an interesting story to tell and a friend who happens to write for a living. So if you'll excuse us. Presenting the Limelighters family album. A penetrating picture story starring Len, Alex, Blue, and Ellen M. So here we go. From the first cigarette in the morning to the last cigarette at night, your taste stays fresh with Ellen M. It's sure to treat you right, so won't you start fresh any time of day with Ellen M. That's what we say. Stay fresh all through the day with Ellen M. That's the way unlock the whole new world of fresh smoking pleasure. Start fresh. L&M's the greatest, for profound and aesthetic reasons, of course. L&M tobaccos are moisturized for freshness and flavor. That's profound. Smoke after smoke, your taste stays fresh. L&M is never drying to your taste. That's aesthetic. So? Start fresh, stay fresh with L&M. Next on Follow the Sun, Paul Templin becomes involved with a beautiful stranger who calls herself Marie Hamilton. I am not a secretary and I am not from Toledo and my name is not Marie Hamilton. How does that strike you? But to this woman, a name or a man could be replaced as easily as an old pair of stockings. I'm Marie Hamilton. Well, come on in, come on in, sit back on. Any man out with a lovely, sympathetic girl is gonna say a lot of things about his wife, his boss, his friends. Every word's picked up in a tape recorder on the girl's handbag. Recorder much smaller than yours. A few days later, the man gets a transcript. 
He pays, Paul. He pays plenty to get the original recording back. We've got to go with the truth, no matter how bad it looks, no matter how smart she's been. The truth it is, no matter how bad it looks. And it does. Mrs. Curtis, have you ever met Paul Templin? Yes. You believed he killed your husband, didn't you? No, I'm sure that if he had, he would not have been released. She's lying! Who was Marie Hamilton? We hope you'll join us for The Woman Who Never Was, starring Bethel Leslie and Henry Jones, next on Follow the Sun.